but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither rust nor moth consume nor thieves break in. In the name of the Father and of the Son, the Holy Spirit today, amen. Today we celebrate the holy beginning of the holy season of Lent, a wonderful time when you think about it. Of course, it's a time for us to think about why we're here and where we're going. We found that out this morning when we had the ashes placed upon ourselves. Remember, man, that thou art dust, and to dust you shall return. We are nothing but dust, dust, the dust of the earth, and we are going to go back to the, the dust. Our bodies will decay, but our souls will live on. So today, in a way, we, we, we want to con continue to think about where our souls are going, what's happening in our lives. So many people today, these days, don't give a care about the next life. Many foolishly say that there is no God, there's no hereafter, there's nothing. After death, there's nothing. How foolish. As the scripture says, only the fool says in his heart, there is no God. And we know there is a God in heaven. And we know that we've offended him. We haven't kept the commandments as we should. And that's why the prophet Joel tells us, so we have to rend our hearts and not our garments. Rend our hearts, convert our hearts, be sorrowful with your, with your hearts for all of your sins. Because sin is the only evil in the world. Sin offends God. We may not fully understand that. Of course, we don't. We want to do what we want. And sometimes, of course, many times, what we, do, what we want to do is not what God wants us to do. He's given us the Ten Commandments, which we have to obey if we want to please him. Jesus said, if you love me, you keep my commandments. So we know we have offended God. We haven't kept his commandments. And those commandments are given to us for our happiness. They are our joy and our peace. When we disobey these commandments, we're never at peace. God has made us that way so that we disobey him and we live a, a sinful life. We will never be happy. But we have a good God and a merciful God and a kind God who loves us. And as the scriptures continually say, God doesn't wish the death of the sinner. He doesn't wish our death. He loves us. That's why he made us. God didn't have to create this world, you know. He's perfectly happy by himself. But he wanted to create this whole world out of nothing. When we had that reading the other day in Genesis, let there be light, and there was light. And let there be fish, and let there be animals, and let there be the sun, and so on. And there it was, out of nothing. Forget the Big Bang theory, all right? Where did all the stuff come from the big, to go into the Big Bang? God created everything out of nothing. God is all powerful and all good. And he created us so that we would be happy with him for all eternity. But he has given us a way of life so that we have to live. Sadly, Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden disobeyed God. So now our situation is much more difficult. All right? If Adam and Eve had not sinned, sinned, then we, things would have been much different. We wouldn't have had to suffer so much and so on. But even with that, God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to redeem us. And the happy fault, because Jesus is our God and he saved us, shows us his love, he has established his church, and he gives us all the helps we need to live a good life. He said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So if we keep his commandments, we'll be happy. It's that simple. Keeping God's commandments is the only way to live. But we also know that many of us have failed to keep his commandments. But God will also forgive us. Because as we see in today's readings, God is rich in mercy and he will always forgive us. And that's why we're here today. 
We're here to tell them today that we're sorry for all of our sins. And during these next 40 days of, of Lent, we're going to live a little bit more carefully. We're going to practice a little penance. We're going to sacrifice ourselves more. And we're going to especially keep his commandments. And we ask God for the grace to keep his commandments. And we know that we cannot do that without his grace. And Jesus has also told us, without me, you can do nothing. We can't even say the name of Jesus without the grace of God. And even to want to keep his commandments is a great grace. If you today want to keep God's commandments, that's a grace from God. All right, he gives us the grace both to will, to will something good, and to accomplish it. Now you ask God the grace through Our Lady, through the Immaculate, to give you the grace to keep his commandments and live a holy life because this is the only way we will be at peace. St. Augustine told us this, our hearts are restless until they rest in thee, O Lord. So we will never, never be happy by disobeying his God's commandments. We may think we're going to be happy if we do this and we do that, but we're not. That's why there's so many people in the world who are so unhappy, so, so unhappy. They don't even want to live. How did that happen? Many of them, I can't say for everyone, but many of them, maybe they have a, a lot of guilt on their heart. They feel depressed. And the, old, and the devil says, look at you, look at you. You've done this and you, done, you did that. There's no hope for you. Why don't you just end it all? Because you know the devil loves suicide. He's a murderer and a liar, and he loves death, murder, suicide, and so on. So many people are depressed, and they want to end their lives. It's a very sad, sad situation, my friends. But it doesn't have to be that way. That's why we, don't, we can't listen to the world that tells us there is no God that you can do this and you can do that because we know better. We know there is a God and he sent his son, Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ established his church and the church gives us the means to keep his commandments and shows us how to live a good life. All right, because the church is holy. We're not so holy all the time, but the church is holy and has a means of holiness, the fountain of salvation the fountain of grace, when we come to the sacraments and to the prayers of the church, we will get the graces we need. So we want to ask for those graces during this time of Lent. And always, the grace to live good lives. Because only by living good lives, we will be at peace and we'll be happy. Now, it's always customary in Lent to do a little sacrifice and this is important too, so make, it, make up your mind now that you're going to make a little sacrifice. You're going to do something good, do something positive, do something that's constructive. In my, when I was a little boy, I used to give up candy for Lent. And that was a big sacrifice. But we were encouraged by the good sisters to do things for Lent. And everybody was doing it. You'd always go around and hear somebody, what are you giving up for Lent? What are you giving up for Lent? And say somebody would give up this and somebody would give up that. In those days, we'd give up the movies too. That was a big thing on a Saturday. Give up candy. Now those things are very good to give up because they're good training for your, for your, for your spiritual life. By doing a little penance, by doing penance, you bring down graces from God and you get the grace to practice virtue, the grace to do things that you don't want it, that you find it difficult, to be kind and patient and so on. So that's why we do penance and that's why we give up things, make little sacrifices so that we can make sacrifices and practice a life of virtue, kindness and patience. So let's make this Lent a, a beautiful time not a somber time, as Jesus tells us. Don't disfigure your face and show everybody 
your suffering and so on, because that's not the way. You, you may be fasting, but that's not going to make you unhappy. It's going to make you fill with peace and joy because you'll bring down many graces from God. So we ask for those graces and we want to do good during this time of Lent. And then we will see, come Easter, we'll be much happier than we are today. We want to repent of all of our sins. And we want to pray like Our Lady asked at Fatima, pray for many sinners who now are in danger of falling into hell for all eternity. And that's why Our Lady came. In a way, she was inaugurating a lifelong Lent when she came to Fatima because she asked us to give up sin. Stop offending God. He's too much offended by sin. And she told us what we need to do to live a good life. Pray the rosary. Stop offending God. And do the first Saturdays. Mass and Holy Communion. Pray the rosary. Meditate on the rosary. And go to confession to get rid of your sins. It's a wonderful catechesis for Lent to listen to what Our Lady, our mother, our good mother has asked us to do. And if we follow that and we follow the Fatima message every day, we will truly be very happy and filled with peace and our life will be filled with many, many blessings from God. May the Lord bless you.